Welcome back everybody to the Bros of DK. I have a very special episode for you all today. I'm crossing the border between France and Spain and we're going through the mountainside of the Pyrenees. These are the big mountain, that's the big mountainside between France and Spain. And look at the view that I'm currently having over here. This is just out of this world. A fairy tale landscape. And we're now gonna make our way over to Spain to explore one of the most amazing places that I've ever done on this channel. It's a gold and silver factory with gold and silver still left in there. And even the mansion that's with it is just amazing. It's a true time capsule. I'm really excited for that one and I'm also very excited to drive through this region and see the landscapes. Wow. I really enjoy traveling the world. And this is just part of it, the, the mountain sides, the beautiful landscapes, nature. <sighs> That's something that you get while exploring the abandoned world. So let's get over, let's head over to the car, let's hop in, <laughs> sorry for the wind noise, but let's go to Spain. this documentary, we are going on a journey to much simpler times. We will give you a glimpse inside a traditional 19th century farmhouse on the countryside of Spain. The house is located in the north of the country on a remote and secluded piece of land, surrounded by endless wine fields. The owners built this house themselves in the beginning of the 1800s and lived here together with the entire family. They used to work on the wine fields that belonged to the noble Spanish counts and all year round they would produce grapes for a nearly livable wage. Since before the 2000s, nobody has lived in this house anymore. But there are clear signs that somebody still comes here until a few years ago. Nowadays the house lays abandoned and forgotten. And it acts as a portal that is going to take us back to a former time period. everybody the location that we came for the gold and silver factory that I was talking about was completely closed and we had to go and find another location but we have another one for you all today we have an 18th century traditional Spanish farm that's completely left behind how the people once lived here I got today my beautiful Spanish attire on what the people used to wear when they lived in this place and with this attire on I'm gonna take you through the house and show you the artifacts that are left inside of here and open, open this time capsule forever to you all. But first off, have a look at the house. This is the house, how it was built with clay and stone, probably handmade by the first people that came to live on this plot of land. If we come a little bit further, you can see here on the ground as well, they just built it directly on stone floor stone directly into the into the mountainside actually okay my attire is a little bit big so my pants is going down 
I have to pull it up a few times during the video. Let's see what's left behind in these chats over here. Okay, they seem quite empty, but I'm just thinking what they might have been used for. This might have been to house feeding for the animals, food for the animals or animals themselves. We have another one over here. Come inside. Oh yeah, I think these would be for chickens or birds or any kind of bird. You can see there's still a little bit of straw left in here from the last animals and feathers as well. Oh my God. Small pot that they used to cook on back in the day. I love these traditional places. They show you how people used to live. And I've not filmed many Spanish places before. This is actually only my third one. So uh, I'm excited to explore the country of Spain as well. And over here, we enter into the barns of the place. Where most likely animals would be housed in the winter and in the evening. You can see again how they built this place on the rocks. Wow, fantastic. You can definitely see that it's completely hand-built. A beam to dry things on, fruits and vegetables, garlic and all those things. Be careful, <laughs> I see you stumbling <laughs> behind me. Okay, it's not very big, the backyard, so uh, let's now hop into the house and see what's left behind in that time capsule. So we're standing here now in the front porch and this is the door where the people used to come in back in the day. It's now completely barricaded. I don't know how long ago these people left behind this place. Hopefully we can find that out inside. Let's go now into this chat over here. Okay, welcome inside. Ooh, this place has been left behind for a long time. Do we see something on the camera? Oh yes. Okay, let me turn up the light a little bit to see a little bit better. But over here, the people made a very small quantity of their own wine, probably just for themselves. If you come look over here, there's a date on here. It says 2010, 12th of February 2010. So this place might have been abandoned since the year 2010. Some bottles of liquor and wine up there. Got over here, some pots to make food in. Wow. These are just some general things to fix up the house. And we got another doorway. Here, the owner of the place stored different kinds of woods, a doorway that, that he might have needed later on. And then we have one last part of the barn where a few pieces of farming equipment are left behind. For example, this trailer over here for a tractor, a plow for the fields. So later on, very normal people might have lived here after the centuries that it has been built. Okay, let's now go into the house. Okay, everybody, let me now take you inside of the traditional Spanish home that we see here in front of us. Up the stairway, through the wooden door, inside of the house. It has a very unique, traditional style to it when you come inside of this place. Oh, let me leave the door a little bit open, but we'll start over here. This was the entrance hall slash dining area where the people spent most of their time, actually. It's not that big of a house. These people were most likely very poor. If you turn around, you can see the jacket of the last person that lived here. It's still hanging from the coat hangers. With his bag underneath. Oh, even still some bags where he went shopping with. And his wife's bag is also still here. That's quite fascinating. Let's put this all back nicely, how we found it, because we want to preserve 
the time capsule that we're in. You can see the towel is still hanging here. The last time they tried their hands. And then like in France, Portugal, Italy, we also have built-in cabinets over here in Spain. You can see. What's this? Oh, this is a traditional Spanish cerveza. That's a, that's a beer. 1931. Some bottles of liquor left behind as well. And most things in this cabinet actually seem quite new. With new, I mean like 10 years old or something like that. Exactly like the calendar that we found. What's this? I have actually no clue. Some teapots, some plates, maybe the nicest plates that these people owned are still in here. You can see these they used when the family came over, when they had dinner parties. It's made in Spain, actually. See, it says China on there, China Vigo, made in Spain. Wow, I have to be a bit careful with, <laughs> with everything in here. Even the shaver with the cream and the shaver itself from the man that lived here is still left behind. What a wonderful cabinet. And then down here, we have more bottles of liquor, even a bottle of champagne left behind, probably for very special occasions, and some pots, some pans where they used to cook food with. Quite fascinating to see this all. Let's close it up nicely. And maybe he used the shaver that's in there to shave himself in the morning here in this little mirror. That might be a possibility. Wow. I see here behind you, there's also a wine jug left behind. A porcelain wine jug. Has been standing here for a very long time. This leads. Oh, this leads directly to the barn that we were just in. So in the morning, he could didn't even have to go outside, or maybe when it was too hot, he could just enter into the barn through this door. That's amazing to see. Let's close it up, and then right next to it, we have the hand-built stairway. See, they put a few beams in here, made it a little bit nice. And it's completely colored now from the hands that would be constantly touching when people went upstairs. It's now decaying over time. Wow. And then we have the dinner table and it seems like two, maybe three people used to live in this place. See two chairs next to the table, a cloth on there, and a few of the hats. The last person, España, it says on there. Okay, lovely to find all this. There's a lock left behind. Oh, this is an artifact. There's a calendar from 2017 here. November, December 2017. Okay, that's quite interesting because I thought the place would be, have been left behind much longer than this. Maybe somebody came in here and placed it here, but I'm, I'm not sure. And then we come into the traditional Spanish kitchen of the Spanish farmers. You can see here is the sink where they used to cook food all the days. The mother, the, the wife would be in here cooking food, washing vegetables. The plates, the normal plates that they used. See, these are not designed or the design has worn off over time. These are much more ordinary plates. And the other ones, a handmade plate holder above the sink. Quite fascinating. And then next to the sink, they had all the tools, the scissors, the cups, the lids for the pans and pots, all left here. The sift to make the pasta. There's even a spider running around in there. <laughs> he made the sift his home. And this, I have had this wrong in many videos. I always thought when there was mesh in front of these cabinets that there would be animals housed in there. But somebody actually told me that people would store bread and butter and other things in here before the time that they had a fridge. Some mice 
wouldn't go in there and eat it. And there's still some things left in here. You can see some olive oil from the people, some pots and pans. And I think in here, they would store their butter. Because back in the day, most likely there wasn't a fridge in this place. Even though fridges might have been invented, these people might didn't have the money to buy a fridge. And then we have the other side with another dining table, maybe for the morning to have some, and also a jug of wine. And lastly, here in the kitchen, a very important part of the house, the fireplace with the last ashes of the people still in there. Some tools for the fireplace to turn the blocks of wood. Wow. And then the fireplace itself. I love the tile on there. Green with red and yellow tile. Amazing. Oh, this is also a very interesting part. This was a candle holder. And do we see electricity in this place? I don't see any lamps. Wow, come over to the dining area. Are there any lamps in this place? No, there aren't. Wow, no electricity. So the candle holders would be very necessary back in the day. It's now time everybody to head upstairs and see where the people that lived in this place used to sleep. I'm also touching the knob of this hand railing. I'm leaving my marks on there, like the people that lived here did for many, many years. And you can see it's completely crumbling in the way the stairway. But I just love how they made it. They have like these tiles that they put in here, probably smeared cement around there, painted it white because white houses are very common in Spain because people, yeah, they reflect, uh, they deflect the sun. And when you come to Spain, you will see it. Most houses are white on the inside and outside. This one isn't white on the outside, but maybe it hasn't been painted, painted in a long time. It's quite fascinating. Then we enter onto the top floor of this place where the people used to sleep back in the day. Come inside, please. The first thing we notice over here is a picture of two, a very vintage picture, maybe of the grandparents of this place or maybe the parents. This was a very fancy picture. People looked up to this moment of taking a picture like this. They were dressed up, got the most fancy clothes out of their closet. Nowadays, we take pictures like it's nothing. But back then, people looked up to a moment to get a picture. That were, that were, that, those were times, literally. We have some sifts for grain and other types of produce from the field here. A basket where the woman maybe carried grapes on a man or a woman picked grapes, put them into this basket, brought them back, made that hand weight, handmade Spanish wine with it. Oh. And then we have this enormous treasure chest that opens up to reveal a calendar from 1998. And in here, we also have more traditional clothes from the people that lived in this place. Look at this pants. It's amazing to find a pants to work the fields with. And even the woman, her clothes, her vests are left in here. Wonderful to see. Let's put it again all back nicely. We've got one more thing in this treasure chest. That's this newspaper. I can't read Spanish, so unfortunately I cannot translate it for you, but it's from 1984. Probably a regional newspaper. Okay, everybody, and then another very fascinating artifact. This is the sink of the house. There was most likely no bathroom in this place, but here the people came to brush their teeth, wash their face, they had some water, over here and down here they would collect the water from the sink in a basket or something or in, or in whatever. We have a mirror above it where the man most likely shaved himself in the morning, where the woman put up her makeup. 
if she wore any. Some chairs next to it. And then right over here, we have some very special upholstery chairs, Spanish upholstery chairs. It looks like a knight or something like that came to a king to provide him some presents. See a camel in here, very fine upholstery chair. Really love this one. And right next to it, we have another one with another print. Wow. And then we enter into another room of the house. Most likely a storage room. See two chairs next to here. And then a bunch of tools to work the field with. Very traditional tools actually to work the field with. Pickaxe and all these things, things that we don't use anymore today. More tools to this side. And this looks like a pump that would have been installed outside of the house. Oh, so many things to look at. For example, these shoes that we just found here. They are traditional shoes to work the fields with in Spain. Very open shoes, not very fancy. Now we have a cabinet over here. Oh, the pump just fell over. <laughs> That's still completely filled. We see some children's pictures, a boy dressed up in very religious clothing, a girl as well. Maybe these were the children that once lived in this place. And yet again, in this cabinet, bed linen and clothing of the people still stored. Wow, these uh, were, like we call it, uh, like cloths to clean something with. They ripped clothing up as cleaning cloths. Okay, oh, even a mirror in here. Another treasure chest left here. Again, filled with blankets and clothing and cloths. Lovely piece, love the style of it. And then we have a Singer sewing machine to the side. Where the woman would be working on, making the clothes. The man would break the clothes faster than the woman would make them. <laughs> Lovely, all her knitting equipment still left behind in here. Okay, let's go further through here. Very narrow doorways leading from room to room. And they're all not equally made. Oh, look over here. Here we can see outside, over the grape fields behind the house. Yes, and then we enter into this room. It's not very much furnished, but you can see a few things in this place. One religious artifact for praying. There would be a little bit of holy water in there. Then you could make a cross. Depiction of Jesus Christ with a child. And here we see a picture, not of the family. I've seen these two people coming back in a lot of abandoned places actually. And they are most likely royal people in Spanish places and Portuguese places, you see this picture hanging up a lot. It's quite fascinating to see. Beautiful people. Over here we have also a diploma from 1909. San Pedro Giulio, it says on here. Okay, very interesting. Nicely designed as well. And another sink area in front of here. Just want to take a moment, take this beautiful piece in. Just imagine living in this place. People had no electricity, no running water, no Wi-Fi, of course, nothing. They even didn't have a bathroom. This is what they used to clean themselves with, to brush their teeth. They probably washed themselves with a bucket of water. That's how far we have evolved as people over the years. It's fascinating to think about. I'm just standing here in my traditional attire, filming this place, I love it. What do we have over here? These are pieces of soap that the people use. 
even a comb left here. And underneath this one, there is a bucket to catch water. And even the towels are still hanging next to it. One last thing I want to check out in this room is this cabinet. Oh, it seems to be locked. No, 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 I don't want to destroy it. So let's leave it locked. Let's go into the last room of this place. I know it's a very tiny place, but don't be bummed out because after this one, we're going to visit a carriage hall that I'm also going to feature in this video. So let's go. And over here, we enter into the bedroom of the people. A very, a very small bed where I don't think, do you think two people slept in this room? I don't think so. No, there's, you wouldn't fit with two people in this bed. <laughs> wow. A bed with a pillow at the top. The clothing of the people still hanging on the chair over there. Let me show you what these people wear. I love it. You have the blouse of the man. And the clothes to work the fields with. Very fascinating. And I'm right next to there. We have the costume of the person still left there. You can see the costume with the pants underneath and even the boots to go into the, the field with. Over here we have a military picture of a man standing next to a pillar. There seems to be a bubble of water on there. <laughs> okay. Few more things in this room. Here we have a lot of artifacts of the people. Builds of the people. 330 kilograms, probably in order to feed the animals with. We have postcards from all around Spain. Look at this, I have to turn it around. These are all postcards that they could send out to friends and family. Maybe they have also some received postcards. These all seem to be empty. Oh, look at this. This is somewhere from a palace or something like that. Very interesting. Never written. Lovely to see all these things in this place. Problemas. San Pedro, we see it again. San Pedro is also on the diploma. So Mr. San Pedro might have lit in this place. And here is his little book with notes in there. He used to write things down in here. Some calculations and all these things. On the drawer, more religious depictions, crosses, very religious people, of course, in France. Uh, excuse me, we're not in France. I filmed so many places in France that I always think that I'm in France. But this is Spain, and Spain people were always also very religious and more clothing here to the side hanging forever this looks very much like the color of my attire wow and then one last thing that we got to check out that's the balcony actually wow come outside over here Here the good people could sit. It's actually a very nice place to be at. Lovely breeze coming in because it's very hot nowadays and now at the moment in, in Spain. And from here, the people could look over their wine fields and enjoy the view from their house. Okay, everybody, let's now head over to the carriage hall. Let me show you beautiful 18th century carriages that have been left behind. Let's go. Now it's time to turn things around. To conclude this documentary, we're going to show you how the noble Spanish counts traveled through the wine fields where the farmers used to do backbreaking work. On the lands of a grand Spanish palace, not far from the traditional house, we found an abandoned barn filled with coaches from the 19th century.
So everybody, we're now at the other location, the carriage hall, and I changed my entire attire to be a bit more royal because we are standing right next to a palace in the carriage hall where all the carriages where the people used to be driven around with are left behind. This place is a very unique place. Let me show you around to the carriages that are left behind in here. First off, we have a few carriages where just a single horse would pull the carriage and one person would be in here. No driver or anything, just the person itself. They are probably beginning of the 19th century, maybe 18th century. Very unique style. Leather on there, leather seating. Wow, they have been in here for quite some time, as you can see. For even more ones over here. This is a cabriolet carriage probably doesn't function anymore, unfortunately. Those are also one of my most favorite finds while exploring abandoned places. We have a very unique one over here. So the driver would be in front, driving with the carriage, and then the royal people would be sitting behind here in these basket-like seating areas of the carriage. And then one of my most favorite ones we have standing here. Unfortunately, it has completely deteriorated over the years that it has been here. I'm just looking at this. Would they put some sort of a lighting in here? A, a candle is, of course, so you would never put a candle in here. But it seems like you would put a lantern, an oil lantern maybe in here. So the driver would be up front, sitting there and the royal person would sit in the back here. Wow, look at the deterioration on this piece. Nothing is left of it anymore. I'm sure if they would have taken it back in the day to an auction hall, they would have probably got a bit, a lot of money for it. And then there are a few more in the back over here. And I think these are for the working people. You can see this one is more to transport goods around the property. Put bales of hay on here. A, a farmer or a worker of the property would be in front, driving the carriage. This would be the handbrake. Still functions. Very stiff. Oh, I also really love this one. With the hot weather here in Spain, I think this one is perfect because it's fully open and you can enjoy a breeze while you would be driven around. Oh, amazing to see this. Let me try to sit in there. Of course, I don't want to make my clothes very dirty, but I'm gonna try it out how it would have been to sit in one of these. <sighs> what a place again. I want to thank everybody very much watching this week's video. With the traditional Spanish house changing over to the royal carriages, it was a fantastic experience to explore this all. If you like this week's video, please like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and write me a nice comment. In the description, there's also a link to Patreon and there you can support the channel and help us explore places around the world. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for watching this week's video and I will see you next week in another epic adventure. Bye bye, I love you very much.